This is the Bentley Flying Spur. It's a car that honestly sometimes does not get as much attention as it deserves. Bentley now has the volume selling Bentayga SUV and a brand new version of the Continental GT and GT Convertible. And both of those cars tend to steal a bit more of the spotlight. But with this third generation Flying Spur, Bentley has thrown so much of the car that the company itself is asking, is this the greatest car in the world? Let's check it out. Most of the significant changes come with the design language and the mechanics. Now you probably remember the first generation Flying Spur. It basically just looked like a Continental GT with two extra doors glued on. It kind of, the cars were very much similar. And the same can sort of be said about the second gen car, which came in 2013. But for this third go around, the designers have worked really hard to differentiate the two. So they want to keep the family lines there, but they want to differentiate the Flying Spur and the Continental, and they've done a great job. So starting up front with the car, the designers took the front axle of the Flying Spur and moved it way up, like a, a significant margin. So what you're left with, is actually a very small space when you're talking about front overhang. Now, when you look at the back, there's a ton of car that hangs out over the rear axle. When you're looking at a car this big, the proportions are crazy interesting. And in side profile, you can see the difference between the front and the rear. And oh boy, do we have to talk wheels. 21 and 22 inch wheels are optional. It's like 22 inch wheels on a sedan. And the way this car rides, it has no business being as comfortable as it is for riding on 22s. And talking about the body itself, the previous Flying Spur had steel in its structure, but this car is made of all aluminum, which actually does save a bit of weight, but not too much. The Flying Spur still weighs 5,372 pounds. It's a big car. Before we move on to the interior, I have to bring up a few of my favorite exterior design details. This car, the one that we've been spending time with today, features the Black Line specification package. It's just shy of five grand, which actually in the grand scheme of things with the price of this car isn't terrible. Um, and what that does is it takes the absolutely massive grill and up front fascia and turns it black. Without this spec, the car kind of has, I don't know how else to say it, like too much face. This calms things down and especially up against this white paint, it looks really elegant. And then up here, we have the Flying Bee logo, which just like another British car that we will not name, goes up and down um, and can be hidden when you'd like. But this has been redesigned with the Flying Spur. It actually shares the same design on the recent concept car that Bentley debuted. So you're sitting in the back seat of your Flying Spur. Somebody is driving you somewhere. What toys do you get to play with? The answer is a lot. This car is specced with the optional rear seat entertainment with maps, which is $7,000. <clears> but they are Android-based tablets that are fixed to the back of the seats and you yank them off and you get all sorts of cool stuff to play with. But this is just a regular Android tablet, but it has some Bentley twists, including the Bentley Mirror app, which lets you take really, really bad pictures of yourself in the back seat. Um, you can also watch movies, browse the internet, do all sorts of stuff with this tablet. You can also work with this controller that sits in between the two rear seats. And from here, you have control over just about everything in the car including the option to move the Flying Bee hood ornament from the back seat of the car. That's fun. Um, but you can also control the seats. You have heated, cool seats, massage. You can control them moving forward and backward. Um, the media that's playing with the car, you can change the destination and the maps, but all of it is right here. So when I first heard about this car, of course you're gonna be sold on 75% of it right away, right? You get the fancy back seat, the posh interior, the whole like Bentley-ness of it, so to speak. But the company kept talking about how much they believed in the Flying Spur as a driver's car. When you get into the specs of the car, the whole driver's car situation seems to make a little bit more sense. 626 horsepower and similarly 664 pound feet of torque and that's coming from a w12 engine with two twin scroll turbos that'll do 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds and onward to a top speed of 207 miles per hour i'm gonna do that one one more time just for emphasis 207 miles per hour in a car that's this size and weighs 5,000 pounds that shouldn't happen uh, the cost of all that weight, even with all of this car's, you know, adaptive dampers and steering input, is that once you carry quite a bit of speed into the corners, it's a bit concerning. Um, not in the sense that it can't handle the corners, but you're mostly worried about how it's going to stop and quickly behave. Gathering speed is no issue in the Flying Spur. It's what you do with that speed around a corner and slowing down that's a bit scary. 
So I started this video by saying that Bentley posed the question, is the new Flying Spur the best car in the world? It's a hell of a question, right? That's a lot to sort through. But when you look at the improvements they made to this third generation car, the new technology, the interior improvements as well with the three-dimensional leather and things like that, you add up all those details and I don't think I can argue too much against Bentley when they ask that question. Now, I'm not really willing to say it's the best car in the world, but that said, if you have the means and you're looking at a car at this price point and you're into that whole drive or be driven mentality, I'm not sure there's a better option on the road today.